If you've been following along with the series so far, playlist in the cards now. We've just cleared the urgent quest to get into 3 star village, and the first 3 star key quest, Toxic Troublemaker. Whenever you clear an urgent quest, you should check around town to see if anyone has anything new to say to you, or something new to unlock. I meant to cover this in the Toxic Troublemaker video, but I forgot. As a prime example for when you complete an urgent quest, you should talk to the farm manager, as you now have access to the mushroom tree plus two in the farm. It costs 5,000 Yukimo points. It may not be a huge priority for you now, but it's good to know it's there, and you should unlock all of the farm upgrades eventually. On top of that, you should also check the drink and hot spring quests. The hot spring and drinks are a permanent progression upgrade that you definitely want to keep up with. It's a system that's useful throughout the game. We should now have access to the hot spring quest, In the Name of Hot Water, where we'll fight a Royal Ludroth. Completing this quest will give us 25 extra stamina each time we use a hot spring. I'm going to cover Royal Ludroth in this video, and after you do the Village Key quest, you should try and clear this one as well. Remember this is a multiplayer quest, so it will be a little more difficult. If you're able to, I recommend you get some help with it. As a side note, one of the requirements to unlock the drink quest Terrible Poison Frozen Snow for a feline attack drink upgrade is to hunt three Royal Ludroths, so you should remember to do that at some point as well. Consider hunting three in a row now so you don't forget later. Now, let's talk about Royal Ludroth's attacks. One of Royal Ludroth's most annoying attacks is his Barrel Roll. The path this roll takes can be a bit deceiving, and personally, I get hit by this pretty darn often. Generally speaking, you want to be by his head for this move, though if you're too close, you'll still be hit. After this attack, if you're close enough, it's a decent opening to attack him. It's important to always assume if you're in a position to be hit by this move, that Royal Ludroth will do that attack next, even if it doesn't. Since this attack is so troublesome, you need to treat his sides like danger zones, and always be ready to roll away if he's not currently doing something else. Next up is Royal Ludroth's spit attack. His water-based attacks will inflict water blight to you. This status ailment will cause your stamina to recharge much slower. You can see when blighted, your character will spray out water periodically. It also shows as an icon next to your character's name. To get rid of Water Blight, you can either wait out the timer of about a minute, or use a Null Berry. You're given two in a blue chest for this quest. Funnily enough, rolling will also lower the duration of the Blight, even if you're rolling in water, so if you're out of Null Berries, rolling works as well. Royal Ludroth's normal spit attacks leave a lingering geyser that will inflict Water Blight. Royal Ludroth can also fire three in quick succession in a couple of patterns. One where he fires left to right. And one where he fires the middle one first, then left, then right. These can be tricky to deal with. Staying to his side, ideally his right side, can help avoid the multi-shot ones. Next up is the belly flop. There's not much to say about this one, it's just a belly flop attack. Rolujot's neck is like a sponge, so doing this attack will splash water around, and if you're hit by the splash, it will cause water play. The hitbox doesn't linger too much, but the range is deceptively long. If you can space it properly, it's a good opportunity to attack. Next is his dive attack. Not much to say about it, just keep it in mind and stay out from in front of the monster and you should be fine. Another somewhat simple attack, and reason to not stand in front of the monster, is for Ludra's double bite. Continuing the trend of not much to say, if you're around Royal Ludra's back, he may do a double tail swipe. Keep it in mind, and understand that it first swipes to his right, then his left. Here's one that can trip you up if you're not ready for it. He'll do a bite, and then sweep his tail doing a 180 degree turn. Not too much to say, just keep it in mind. Avoid his bite, then give him some distance. If you're really close, he may try to swipe at you with one of his hands. He can do this with either hand. 
There's not much to say about this. If you see it coming, you can try rolling away. That's about it. Finally, his spitting runaround. Very similar to Gypseros, if you're familiar with that monster. His spit in this attack doesn't linger, and you can be hit by his body as well. Just avoid him and wait for him to stop. Finally, there are some mobility actions he can do. They're not attacks, but it's important to recognize that he can do them and what they look like. And finally, there's his most dreaded action. Taunt. When you see him do this, it's basically free damage time. Do your big attacks here. I'll end this section showing what it looks like to roll Water Blight off. Each roll likely takes a chunk out of the timer. I'm not sure how it works specifically. As always, take useful item from the blue chest. If this is your first time fighting Royal Ludroth, you will find it in Area 10. The cutscene at the start of this video will play there. Otherwise, you'll likely find it in Area 5. One day I'll stop reminding you to paintball the monster. Today's not that day. Remember to paintball the monster. Similarly, get into the habit of taking out the small monsters in the area before fully engaging with the large one. The common skill you'll need is to be able to fight one monster while your attention is on another. Keep the camera on the most dangerous one here. Now that we're alone, we can get down to business. Most of Royal Ludroth's attacks are easy enough to avoid, as long as you always stay out of the area directly in front of him. That leaves us with the attacks that are harder to avoid. Most notably, in my opinion, are the multi-spit attacks and his barrel roll. For the multi-spit, favor being on his right side. Again, his right, not yours. Though this isn't always necessary like it might be in later fights. As for the dreaded barrel roll, this is another key skill that you'll need to learn for Monster Hunter. If an attack is too fast or hard to avoid on reaction, then you need to anticipate it instead. Think to yourself, if you were Royal Ludroth and you knew your barrel roll was useful, or any attack, when would you want to use it? Whenever you're in a position where you can be hit, stop what you're doing and move unless you're sure he won't do that attack. In the attack section for the barrel roll, I said you want to be by his head. That's because his head takes the most damage, so you'll likely be around that area. But if you're behind him or trying to cut off his tail, etc., then try to keep yourself in front of the fat part of his tail. Treat this move with respect until you figure it out more, or he'll chunk you. Being killed by a high damage move sucks, but running out of healing items from recklessness or not being aware of certain dangers sucks more. If I wasn't in sword mode with a switch axe, I would have bounced there and been hit by his barrel roll. Be careful using weapons without natural ESP, 
If you bounce at the wrong time, you're screwed. If you're new to the game, that may sound confusing. ESP is an armor skill that prevents bouncing. I bounced because I hit Royal Ludrat's arm, which has a low hit zone, and I have yellow sharpness. There's some calculation that takes into consideration the quality of your sharpness and the value of a hit zone and some other weapon specific variables, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Basically, right now, it'll be a little trial and error, and that's okay. If you bounce off a part, it's too hard and you're not doing that much damage. At the same time, make sure to keep your sharpness level high as much as you can. Getting a weapon with a consistent green sharpness should be your early game goal. You'll be set for a long time with green sharpness. Yellow is really, really bad. Weapon selection can be difficult. There's a lot of confusing numbers and variables, and one weapon that may seem great may not be for one reason or another. Yada yada. If you take anything away from this video, don't let efficiency take away from your enjoyment from the game. Use the weapon that you like the most, and don't think about it too much. Especially in the early game. Well, and I hope you also learn how to fight Royal Ludroff. When you see a lot of projectiles coming at you, try and find the rhythm or the pattern. If you're not at risk of being hit in the next few seconds, don't panic. I'd rather you move less and have the projectile miss you than have you move too much and you run into it. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. For this hunt, I wanted to try and break Royal Ludrat's head, his neck, and his tail. You can do it if your attacks are focused enough, but you may also do too much damage and kill him before you get all three. Focus on the part that you want the most first. He turned away from me. He's running away. When monsters are weak or tired, they'll often go and find some food. Royal Ludrat also has a fun interaction in Area 2. Royal Ludroth apparently have sponge-like scales, which they use to absorb water and prevent drying out on land. So he'll come here to top up. I didn't think the trajectory would hit me where I was standing. It's tricky. Since the belly flop attack lands near his front side, you can more easily avoid it by being near his back. This is the case for some other moves, like roars. Try and avoid where the attack originates from. If you cut the tail off, don't forget to carve it.
Take your time with this one. Make sure you walk before you run. Things are going to get tricky from here on out, but if you're patient and diligent enough, you'll be able to overcome anything. Good luck. You've got this. Now let's talk about the armor. The Blademaster armor has the skills Have Hunger and Marathon Runner. Without any decorations, this is already a pretty decent starter set for dual blades. But if we add one water attack and five sharpener jewels, we'll also get water attack plus one and speed sharpening. All of these combined to make for a very good early game dual blade set if you can get a water weapon. And wouldn't you know it, Royal Ludroth has water element dual blades. This set is fantastic for monsters that are weak to water, such as Baroth when he's covered in mud. It's also pretty good for hammers. The gunner armor has the same skills as the blade master one, including being one off from having water attack plus one. It's worth noting that if you equip the cap with the blade master set, you'll have enough points to get water attack plus one without making a decoration. And while that's all well and good, and the gunner helmet looks better, at least on female characters, you may as well just make the water attack decoration as it'll likely be useful in the future, while the low rank armor won't be. The skills have hunger and marathon runner make this set very good for bows, as it will reduce the speed in which your stamina drains when you pull back the bowstring, as well as make your stamina decrease in chunks slower. Combine this armor with the Royal Ludroth bow and you have a pretty good starter pierce water set, which is fine to use against the upcoming Wrath. That's all for now. Until next time.